Excellent. So I've built a little uh, a demo uh, module here in uh, Python. Uh, for this one, we just use uh, URL lib, but you can use whatever fancy library you want, especially if it's something that we don't have coverage for in framework. Um, and so this one is a login scanner, uh, something, a capability that was landed for external modules uh, just this past uh, couple weeks. Um, and so it doesn't do a whole lot. It tries to URL open and if it gets a 200, uh, it knows that that particular password was a success. Uh, so we can take a look at the service. If we do uh, just curl it, Uh, we can see that we get a 403 forbidden telling us that we need to log in. And then when we try to log in, uh, we can see that uh, it gives us something different once we find the right key. Uh, telling us that we need to try a little harder. So we've got a password list. This one doesn't take username, so it's just passwords with a space indicating an empty username there. Uh, so some of the common passwords, uh, we'll see if any of them work. Uh, so especially if you're developing a module or trying to distribute a proof of concept, uh, starting Metasploit every time you need to run a module or if you're trying to script a module, starting Metasploit every time uh, can be a little frustrating for the feedback loop. So being able to run it uh, independently uh, is, uh, makes it a little bit easier to use for some simple things uh, like this. And so, uh, but because we don't have all of uh, Metasploit here, we do need to uh, use shell scripting to get uh, all of the uh, uh, information we need into the thing. So here we use a bash substitution. Uh, so instead of having to build the file reading and uh, username password generating code all over again in uh, Python, which we definitely don't want to do because that code was messy enough the first time we wrote it. Uh, this allows us uh, to just do a uh, shell substitution and uh, we can see that run. Or if you wanted to maybe not lock out the service, we could uh, add a small sleep interval. Uh, and just do one second. And so we see that every second we try another combination. And uh, we'll get to the success here in a moment. Yeah, see Hunter 2, as always, great success. Uh, and we can verify that with curl. And we can see uh, that indeed that does work. Er, uh, not if I do HTTPS though. And then when I don't tell curl to do the wrong thing, uh, we can see that we indeed, indeed did hack the Gibson. Uh, and so being able to write another library to use a standalone thing, like if you uh, look at it again, uh, we don't import arg parse or anything. And so we were able to use a standard sort of declarative metadata, uh, similar to what you do in a normal Metasploit module. Um, and then you don't have to mess with setting up the argument scanner. That's all handled for you uh, by the Metasploit library. Uh, which means you do have to set your Python path to point to it. Uh, although in the near future, we're planning to release it. So you'll be able to just pip install Metasploit uh, and use some of these great uh, boilerplate removing features by yourself. Uh, so if I do like, uh, if I look for Python, yeah, I've got the environment variable set up, uh, which Metasploit normally handles automatically. Uh, but, uh, you have to do yourself if you're not using Metasploit. Uh, the trade-off there is that it does run faster and you don't need the whole Metasploit. Uh, install just that, uh, just the Python code, which has no dependence on anything else in Metasploit. Uh, 
Or you can also run it from uh, Metasploit console. The uh, Coldstone library uh, that powers the uh, Python modules uh, can detect when it's being run by Metasploit. Uh, right now, it just uh, looks to see if anything is being uh, passed on the command line. And if it is, it assumes it's being run in interactive mode uh, because Metasploit will never pass anything in on the command line. Um, and so here you see we get all of our uh, handy uh, uh, login scanner options uh, because this uses uh, all of the good login scanner mix and goodness. So if we add a new workspace, uh, oh, wait. If we add a new workspace, yeah, there we go. Um, uh, we can see that we don't have any creds, and then if we set the R hosts, and we set the R port, and we set the user pass file, uh, Metasploit will read in the file for us, so we don't have to come up with any shell trickery to do that, which is nice. Uh, and then, yeah, we can just go ahead and run it. And we get the normal scanner output. And then if we look at creds, uh, you can see that Adam's very vulnerable web service has a uh, private uh, password associated with it. Uh, yeah. And that's some of the power of what you can do now with uh, the external modules. Excellent.